Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about makeup brushes. So I'm going to be showing you how I clean them and how I care for them kind of on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. Um, and I'm actually going to be bringing you over to my bathroom sink and showing you how I actually wash the brushes, which I do about once a month. So we'll get into that in just a bit, but I wanted to mention two things quickly. Uh, one is my brush collaboration that I did with Isam is back in stock, so I will leave a link to that down below. Many of you missed out on it when we first offered it late last year. I was very pleasantly surprised that they sold out very, very quickly. I was I was pretty shocked actually. So um, they are finally back in stock. So many of you have been asking me uh, when they were going to come back in stock and I didn't have a date until a couple weeks ago. So anyway, I announced it on my Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, you definitely should. I announced it over there and I just haven't gotten a chance to mention it here on my channel. So I wanted to let you guys know that it is back in stock and thank you, thank you, thank you so much to all of you who have purchased the brush set, who have supported me and Muse Beauty Pro. So thank you so much. The second thing I want to mention is uh, Refer. And in case you haven't heard of Refer yet, even though I've talked about them quite a bit on this channel, um, they are a Canadian based uh, makeup brush company and they are run by the three most lovely, amazing guys in the entire world. But they have a wonderful brush collection of handmade Japanese brushes, um, all using undyed goat hair. So I'm just holding up one here. What I wanted to let you know is that I do have a coupon code that you can use towards their complete set. So their complete set is a set of their makeup brushes. I believe there's 14 brushes eye and face brushes that are included in the complete set. They'll come with the MAC black handle with the refer label here and then an indication of which brush it is. Again, they're all undyed goat hair and that set goes for $440, but if you use my code, you'll get the complete set for $299. Because these brushes are handmade in Japan, when you order this set, it will take 10 to 12 weeks to get to you. But what they will ship out to you, which is a bonus and also as a kind of like, sorry, you have to wait for the complete set. What they will send you immediately is a 22 brush, which is their big like bronzer brush, which is amazing. You can see I use it quite often. Um, this is their glossy handle, which is not what it's gonna look like. It is going to be in the matte black handle. So my code is just my full name, Michelle Wong, no spaces. And again, you can use that code on Refer for the complete set, which originally, again, is $440 and you'll get it for $299. And I do want to mention that that code is an affiliate code. So I will make a small commission off of any purchases made with that code. And that is it for my announcements. Let's go ahead and jump into the caring of my makeup brushes. So I'm going to talk about how I care for my natural haired brushes and my synthetic haired brushes at the same time. So I hope this doesn't seem too jumbled, but I do care for them a little bit differently, not too much. And with synthetic haired brushes, I don't think you need to go too overboard in terms of how you care for them. They are definitely more resilient than natural haired brushes. So why don't I go ahead and start off with what I do kind of on a daily basis. So if I'm using a brush for powder products, what I will do is use a microfiber towel, much like this one, and I will just simply brush the brush over the microfiber towel. Really easy, and when I'm filming, I just leave this towel kind of on my lap and kind of between products, I'll just go ahead and kind of like swish it down there. So that's what I'm doing. If you've ever seen me like cleaning my brushes on camera, that's what I'm doing. So you can see it removes like just enough product for you to kind of like get away with it. Um, what I should mention actually, I'm realizing as I'm saying this is, this is for personal use. If you're a makeup artist, uh, I think you have to clean your brushes very thoroughly and like disinfect them between every use for obvious reasons. I'm just talking about personal use makeup brushes that I use on myself and not on anyone else. So anyway, with all of my powder product brushes, I'll just run them over a microfiber towel. Now the next level of cleaning that I do is one with a daily brush cleaner. And this one happens to be from Sephora. I've used quite a few. I've used, I think it's called Parian Spirit. And then there's one called, I think like So, So Beauty or something. It's one that I got off of Beautylish. I like all of them the same. I think they all perform very, very similarly. I don't really have a preference of one over the other. I just happen to be using the Sephora one at the moment. So one purpose I use this cleaner for is for um, cream, product brushes. So because I don't want to actually 
hardcore clean my natural hair brushes too often because it makes them a little bit too fragile, a little bit too dry. What I will do is use one of these cleaners kind of like in between washes as like an intermediate step. So when I use like, this is a foundation brush from Ruffer, I will clean this brush after every use with one of these cleaners and I'll just kind of spray it on top and I'll let the cleaner sit, I don't know, maybe for like 30 seconds and then I'll take a paper towel and I will just kind of like run it over the paper towel. Basically, I wanna get it to the point where it's dry. And I'm not really like pressing too hard. I'm just kind of grazing the bristles over the paper towel very softly. And then inevitably, I get some of the cleaner on the ferrule because I just, you know, use the sprayer. And I'll just take the paper towel and just kind of wipe that clean. And that's it. So that's what I'll do on a daily basis for like cream product natural hair brushes. I will also use this on synthetic hair brushes. It works well on that also. And then I will also use this on my natural haired brushes um, on a weekly basis. So the brushes where I've been using the microfiber towel on, you know, on a daily basis, the pigment and the product definitely does build up. The microfiber towel doesn't get rid of 100% of the product. So what I will do, um, again, as kind of like an intermediary step before I take them all over to the sink and really wash them with soap and water, is I will use this cleaner. So I'll just, same thing, I'll just spritz it all over. I'll let it sit for, again, like 15, 30 seconds. And then same thing, I'll take a paper towel and then I will just gently kind of like brush the brush over it and you can see that a lot more product is removed versus the microfiber towel. So there, you can see that, you know, it's pretty clean. It's something I feel like I can now like kind of continue on with and not feel too grossed out by myself. So again, I use this on natural haired powder brushes once a week. I will use this on any brush that I've used cream products with um, after every use, natural or synthetic. And I will use this on synthetic hair brushes whenever I feel like they need a cleaning. Because again, I just don't feel like I need to be quite as precious with synthetic haired brushes as I am with natural haired brushes. So that's basically what I do to maintain my brushes kind of between those hardcore sink washings. And I will do a sink washing like once a month. I think that is a good rate for natural hair brushes. Again, you just don't wanna wash them too often because they are more delicate than synthetic hair brushes. Synthetic hair brushes, I think you can clean at the sink, I don't know about as often as you want, but you could probably wash synthetic brushes once a week at the sink with no problem. All right, so let me take you over to the sink and show you how I wash them at the sink. All right, guys, so we are at my sink in the bathroom. I have this uh, Sigma, what is this called? The Sigma Spa Express. And it's this like rubber cleaning mat. It has suction cups, so it like sticks like into your sink really, really well. Um, I think they have one that's like a little bit larger, but this one was like perfect for me. And it just has these like nubby little textures all over. And because all of this is like a very soft plastic, they're all very gentle. None of this is like rough at all. And I really like this to kind of help with the cleaning process. And this is the soap that I use. This is the Dr. Bronner's Pure Castile Soap. I have the um, 18 and one hemp baby unscented one. There's a lot of different versions of this soap, but I've always gone for the unscented one because I really don't want a scent in my makeup brushes. Um, so this one I find works really well. And I had read somewhere that like baby shampoo isn't always the best because it like strips too much oil out. But you know, when I looked at the ingredients here, there's a lot of oils in this actual soap. And I find that this one cleans my brushes and keeps them soft better than any other sort of shampoo or soap or brush wash that I've used. So this one is, happens to be my favorite and I was turned on to this by Sonia G who is, as we know, the, the brush connoisseur. So I trusted her opinion and I'm glad I followed her recommendation because I really do love this one. So because this soap is very uh, concentrated, what I like to do is dilute it. So I bring a ramekin up from the kitchen and I fill it about, I don't know, I wanna say it's about like four to one. So I fill it about that far up and then I just fill the rest up with water. There, and I basically make like a soapy wash out of it. So here I've got a really dirty um, blush brush. This happens to be the Refer number five brush. So the first thing I like to do is wet the bristles. And what I like to make sure I do is I, I don't wanna get too much water into the ferrule or onto the handle between the ferrule here. So I will angle 
the bristles down against the water stream. Next, I'm gonna dip the brush, not all the way in. I dip it in so that most of the bristle gets wet, but not all the way down to the ferrule. And then I'll just gently kind of glide it over this Sigma brush back and forth. If you don't have one of these pads, you can just do this right in the palm of your hand. And you'll see the soap start to lather up. You'll see the brush start to become clean there. And then of course you wanna rinse this off. So again, I wanna make sure I'm angling the brush downward so that I don't get too much water you know, into the base of the ferrule here where all the hairs are attached. And when I first started washing my own brushes, I don't think I realized how long you have to rinse your brushes for. I would just kind of rinse them, run around underwater, and like kind of squeeze the brush head out and that would be it, I would lay it aside. But you really have to do like a really nice rinse. Otherwise you're going to get dried soap in there. That will definitely affect the, well, the, the quality of your brush. It'll affect um, how it functions. It'll also affect the actual hairs. If you have something coated around the hairs that can crack and break off, you can crack and break off the actual hairs. So you want to make sure that everything is rinsed really, really well. So I squeeze the excess water out of the brush. And then I'll take one of these um, Sigma dry and shape towers. Again, this is not necessary. It's much like the pad in here. It's not totally necessary, but I've really come to depend on this because what I do is I'll just squeeze the brush handle into this pink part and it's like kind of like this hard rubber and it just grips onto the brush like that. And they do have these elastic bands at the bottom, which if you want to kind of like run the brush through, up underneath and it'll kind of like shape the brush head, you can do that. But I don't even bother with that. I basically just use this to hold my brushes upside down. So again, no water kind of gets in there. You can also just lay your brush down like along your counter, as long as it's like hanging off the edge, you can do that as well. But I really like this dry and shaped tower because what I'll do is I'll just wash a whole bunch of my brushes, I'll lay them on the counter like I just showed you, and then I'll just quickly kind of squeeze them into this pink section on this tower and kind of be done with it. And I find they dry just a little bit more quickly this way, and I just really like that they dry upside down with this. All right, and one last thing I want to discuss is um, brush guards. So it's these little net <laughs> things that you can throw onto your brushes. It's basically a way to kind of like tame the hairs. So I like using brush guards because it actually lets me know which brushes are clean. So if it still has a brush guard on there, I know I've washed them and I put the brush guard on there and I haven't used them yet. But what the brush guard will do, especially if you leave them on for too long, which I'm definitely very guilty of, what will happen is it will try and find, oh here. So this is the same brush as this brush. And what will happen is if you leave the brush guard on too long, and this one's been on for about a week because I haven't used it, it's still clean. Um, it will kind of be, I don't know if you'd call this misshapen, but it will be like stuck in a certain shape and it will take a couple uses for it to loosen up. But it will loosen up, it will go back to a fluffier state upon use. But if this is something that you don't like, then I would not use these brush guards. I like shaping my brushes, you know, kind of back, even though they're a little bit stiff, I just like making sure all the hairs are kind of like going in the same direction and everything. I also find these great for travel. So I'll throw these on and you can just throw them on from the um, handle up. I will just throw these on and then put them in my Eason brush book. That's what I like to use when I travel. And I just feel like it kind of keeps the shape and it keeps the, you know, the bristles from like running into the brush next to it. And then, you know, the hairs kind of grab onto one another. Anyway, I just really like it for travel also, but I just like that it keeps the brushes really neat. So if I do throw these on after I wash them, I will let the brushes dry probably until about 90%, 95% dry, and then I will put these on. You can also let your brushes dry completely and then throw the brush guards on. I know there's like other steps you can do to shape your brushes. I think um, Stephanie Nicole did a very, very thorough, thorough video of how she cleans and cares for her brushes. I think she puts like an aloe gel on the bristles. I'm just too lazy. I'm not gonna do that. So this is as far as I go. I just throw the brush guards on there. But that is pretty much it. That's pretty much all I do for my brushes. So give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.